happy Monday. I just, I'm uploading this a day late, but that's all right. Um, I'm doing any style of fabric clips and I thought it'd be fun to do, uh, like add some sets of fabric clips to my shop. So that is what I am working on in today's video. So keep watching. So I'll be reusing these rectangle clips. I usually or wanted to use these clips that I'm showing. These are three inch, but I didn't have enough left. So I ordered some on Amazon, but they didn't get here in time. So I might still make them like that. And I didn't want to do two inch. I just wanted the three inch, but it's fine. And that's the size comparison. So I'm going to be using these, which are also three inch and I haven't used them before. So I thought it could be fun to do something new. A video on how I did fabric clips before, but it wasn't a voiceover, I don't think. So I just wanted to, and I'm starting to redo some of my videos and add voiceovers. So I thought I'd go ahead and do this. And I wanted to do like a tutorial on my embroidery stitches, but I will be getting to that too. So I'm just getting the fabric and you could either just cut around if you know, up. I really snuck in. Or you can um, trace around the clip like this. You don't need that much um, allowance, I guess I would call it, like overhang, but you do need some. So I'll show you about, and you want to have more than less, obviously. So about that much is what I'm doing. And I haven't done this shape before, so I didn't want to cut a bunch and not have enough so that's it and this fabric I got on eBay a, a, a long time ago so I don't even I don't even know what it's called or anything and then I'm doing the same thing with all the fabric um, just in time-lapse because that'd be long but that fabric I just had was one I got from a garage sale and this one that I'm currently working on too but the one before that I think I got that from Joanne's and I think I got this one from Joanne's too. So, and this one is one of my favorites. I got this on eBay. I think it's a vintage one. And I'm just gonna grab some felt. I have a ton of felt. I mentioned before that I used to do felt flowers. And I'll actually insert a picture of my Instagram feed when I did felt flowers. Um, if you ever wanna see how I made any of these, just let me know in the comments and I can definitely do that. I've just been using my extra felt from that and I'm trying to kind of match the backgrounds or match the fabric with the felt. You won't be able to see through it, um, but I just like to do it just in case, I guess. I don't know. I Just peace of mind for myself, I guess. So to do the felt, I just hold up the clip to the felt like so and my pen ends up not working so I have to grab another pen and I should have edited this out but I already started my voiceover so and I don't want to add the what it doesn't matter but anyway so I'm just tracing around the clip and you can leave a little bit um just a tiny bit over like bigger than the clip um you want it to be a little bit bigger than too small because you'll see the sharp edges and it could become bumpy and I'll show you um, what I mean when we get closer to it. So I'm just going to do that with the rest of them and it'll be in time lapse too. So yeah. And I guess the time lapse doesn't start until after I cut these. So yeah, just cut these out as you can see. I am using serrated scissors and I show them later. I would use not serrated ones. I think you'd get like a, a cleaner cut. It doesn't matter but it's just something I noticed. Like if you do um, felt flowers or something I would do not serrated scissors. But anyway so I just do that with the rest of these um, and I'm still trying to kind of match the background. Especially with like the lighter colors, like the light pinks and that vintage one behind it, you can kind of see. You can't, but if you did like a, I don't know, like a brown felt behind those, you'd be able to see it. So just something that it kind of matches. So then I just take a clip and I open it and I leave it open while I do 
most of this. Um, so I just take the felt like so and make sure it's lined up. Um, and you just hold it like this. I use, I put the, the side that has the markings to the back. Then grab your glue gun. That's me putting it away and trying to clean it up as best as I can. But it still looks dirty. I promise things like my work area is clean. But I just, the stand broke off of these. So I have to lay it down on like a, a brown bag is what I put it on. And that's what that is. But it's a Sure Bonder. I'll have it linked below. It's a high temp fine tip. Um, hot glue gun and I really like the fine tip of it it's like this I think I've read that it's one of the smallest tips of a glue gun so yeah that's what I use it's super good with felt flowers as well that's why I got it but anyway so I always start at the ends part and then um, I don't know why I'm doing it like this I usually don't <laughs> do one side at a time I do Oh, that's probably my husband walking behind me. He always, when he does that, it shakes <laughs> my camera. <laughs> so, that's fun. So, but this is how I usually do it. I hold it like this and do um, both sides. I usually don't do the end like that. And then just do little sections by sections because the glue um, dries fast when you put it on the metal clip part. And then if you have a little bit of overhang, that was a little bit too much overhang, so I just trimmed it. But you just want, like, that much is good. So. So now you are going to grab your fabric. I wanted to see, I was excited to see what this one looked like, so that's why I'm doing this one first. And I am centering it. You don't have to center it. You, I mean, um, I guess it depends on the fabric on placement. Of the pattern but since this is pretty much the same all the way around I just centered it um, anyway and then I just do section by section uh, starting at that part and then yeah if you do too much glue you'll be able to see through it that's what I was pointing at I didn't do too much glue so it, it was good but yeah I like touch the tip of it the glue gun to the felt so it just kind of drags a little bit because especially if you're using like thinner fabric or linen if you do too much you'll be able to see through it and then you can't really no one's gonna want to buy that because it doesn't look as nice so just a little bit and section by section just like that and when you close it and open it like that there's no openings or like you can't see through it like the fabric and the clip or anything like that so and that's what you want. So I'm going to start with the sides and you don't want it to um, hit the middle of the black part, like right there, how it's pretty close to it. So I'm just going to trim it just a little bit. And it doesn't really matter if it doesn't cover that top black part because we're gonna put a backing on it. Uh, you'll see later in the video, but you just, I like it when it doesn't hit that that black part. So I'm gonna take my glue gun and I do little. I do this part kind of section by section because it the glue dries fast. And I just fold it over and I try and do it kind of. Yeah, I always get glue on myself. I'm used to it now though, so it doesn't even bother me. But when you fold the fabric over, you want to push it the same tightness all the way around. Otherwise, you get like this bumpy looking effect, which isn't horrible. But if you can get it nice and smooth, then that's what you want to do. So I try and push it kind of as tight as I can just so um, it looks nice. And then I'm just going to do the same thing to the other side. I'm going to trim it and glue it sections, just like before. So I'm going to add, and I mentioned this, I think I'm going to add these to my shop and sell them in pairs, but like sets, so four total. And I'll show you guys that later. But um, yeah. But let me know what 
what you think of this video. I will have another bow tutorial because people seem to like those and I was going to do that this week but I think I'm going to do it either next week or the following week. But I'm just doing the same uh, thing. Yeah, let me know just if you have a preference on it. Just put that bit. one up. Tight. Smash it eventually. The hot glue won't hurt. <laughs> I've burned my hand so many times. So that's what it looks like so far. And of course you can move the fabric around if you wanted the placement different. Like if you have, maybe with this one, we'd mess with the placement a little bit more. Um, not too concerned about it. So now, for these part, this part, I mean, I guess if you just do it like that, I think I'm going to maybe, maybe do it like a present, how you do the corners. Oof. I don't know. I just I haven't figured it out yet. I haven't done. I feel like that might make it too thick. Okay, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it roll it together so the two corners touch like that. And then roll it down just like that. Because we're going to use a backing. Oh, hold on. Get this. Okay. Hold it down and there's going to be a backing to cover this. And I'll show you guys. So I think that's what I'm going to do. Because it doesn't matter how nice it really looks, I just didn't want the sides be able to see the sides. So that's why I've, I met the corners here. So it's not... I'll show you. So this, there's a little bit of space, because then the covering will cover that part, and then you won't see this. Not that it's a big deal if you do see that. I mean, it still looks nice and if you didn't want to do a backing and you're not doing the felt because I know some people just do the fabric you could just fold this over twice so you don't see the raw edge but I put a backing on mine so that's what I'm gonna do and this one's a little bit taller than the other one so I'm gonna turn it off and do the same thing I'm gonna get the corners to meet. I guess you could put a dab of glue if you needed to, which I might on this side. Excuse me while I take it out of frame. I have to use my body to move it. Okay. And now, this one is a smooth and harder. You can see my corners aren't even together anymore, but. I can see that it's not gonna go to the edge too badly. Oh, it's off the glue. And then, there we go. I still have to do the backing, but I'm gonna do the rest of these first and then I'll show you guys how I do the backing. And I'll have a clip of Evie or me or someone wearing these so we know what they look like. So. And as always, if you guys ever have any questions about anything in the video or, I mean, anything, just um, leave a comment below and I always read them and reply to them pretty quickly. So, yeah, um, just let me know. And also, if you like this video, don't forget to thumbs it up and subscribe. I usually forget to add that in. but And then I also have like my Instagram linked below if you want to follow along with that and my shop and all that stuff. Oh, and I have my... I'll link... I'll just put a bunch of links on all these supplies and stuff. So, yeah. <coughs> so, yeah. <laughs> and then I'm just going to do a little bit of editing magic. 
so you don't have to sit and watch me verbal use. Done! <laughs> so this is what I use for the backing. It's just a knit bias tape and I can't... I tried to find the shop before so I could link it but I, I can't. I don't know if they closed or whatever but if you just search like knit bias tape you'll find something similar. And they got this like three years ago this bias tape so I yeah it was a bit ago but this is one and one fourth just in case you want the same size there's a there's a lot of shops on Etsy that can sell that sell bias tape so but this is just knit bias tape and it's not folded or anything so yeah so for the backing I'm just going to hold the clip to the bias tape and just trace around it. I found after I did this, you'll see it later on, that I don't have to trace it, but since I've never used this size before, sorry my voice is <coughs> doing something, um, <coughs> that I just need the length. So you could just cut the length, you'll see. But since I haven't used this size before, I just trace it. I end up not even using, like, lining it up or anything, so... See, I just cut around and then I'm like, oh, I don't need to do that. And then I just cut it like that. And then I ran out of my gray, which is unfortunate, but that's okay. And I have the pink. I have this in a few colors, so it's not a big deal if I did it right now. But anyway, so I just line, up, line it up. And then you want to mark, like, with your nail or something, like, right at that base but a little bit above the base, like right, you can see. <laughs> and then cut a little hole. I'm using these scissors, they're really dull. Um, I don't even have them in my Amazon storefront or anything, but I do like them, but I just need to get a new pair of scissors, so. And I started saying like you just need a tiny hole, but you need a bigger hole for these, because the I don't know the name of the parts of the clips, but that thing that sticks out is bigger than the what I usually use, so I'm just making the hole a little bit bigger so that thing gets through. But you don't want it to be too big because then you'll see the felt, you'll see it all. You kind of just want everything to be tucked in and nice and neat, so that's what I'm doing. See? Just pretty much like that. And then I get some hot glue and just put a little bit on that, put it down, and I try and get, um, oh, never mind. I guess I go back and do it. <laughs> and then I do the base, or not the base, but the, the other side. cover that up like so and then yeah and you want to get kind of close to the edge um, I go back and I go around the edges just yeah it's out of frame <laughs> but I get pretty close to the edge just so um I just like the way it looks for it all just to be the same. Oh, it's so early, guys. I'm sorry. <laughs> but then, because I, so it's the same, um, it's covering the same amount around the whole clip. So, anyway. And then I just trim, like, close, super close to the edge. But you got to be careful because you don't want to cut the fabric or anything because this is this is the last step and then if you do that then you just pretty much wasted your whole time making these and the fabric because you can't reuse it so yeah I do this section by section too and it's actually I started this voiceover Sunday night because I'm like oh maybe I'll well I was always gonna post Monday because I was so tired but um just to get it out get it done but then my stomach started hurting so I started so now it's Monday morning and I'm doing this, so. But anyway, so I'm cutting 
super close to the edge um, and I cut I do this kind of slow because I I wouldn't want to cut the fabric at this point like I mentioned so I'm just gluing the backing to it and trimming it around Your nose. So, man, you want to be careful not to get glue on the top too. Obviously, who wants to see a glob of glue? Oh, then just keep on. And they can have these scissors linked below if you want. The only thing is that they're serrated, so you won't get. I guess I can clean up the cleanest cut. Oh, my hand is shaking. But yeah, they're serrated. This is why I'm trying to take a break from embroidery, just because my hands used to not shake as much. But I think because I'm focusing on have been doing a lot of embroidery for a while. Um, it's messing with my hands, which is fine, I guess. I mean, it's not the biggest deal, but I think if I just take time, if I just don't focus so much on embroidery and start doing other things, it'll even out and then it won't be a thing. Like, it won't be fine. It'll be fun. Like this one. Eh. Yeah. It just depends. Um, I did some embroidery, yes embroidery yesterday, so that's probably it. But I find that if I take little breaks, it's not a big deal. But anyway, so this is what the back looks like. I think it looks nice. Like I don't even worry about this. Um, it doesn't. I haven't had any problems with fraying, but I guess if a customer said something about it they could just trim it themselves. It doesn't really, just cause it's bias, I guess. I don't know. Let's see. And that's it. That's what I would, that's it. I think these turned out so cute. I'm excited to show them on Instagram and see what other people think, but I'm gonna do the rest of these. And then at the end, I'll put one, show you how I see to style them on Evie's hair. I don't know if I'd do it on how I would style it in my hair. But probably a similar way um, that I would do it really hair. But I'm gonna time lapse this part and then I'll show you what it would look like in someone's hair. But anyway, like what I was saying before, like I think that embroidering and stuff, since it's like detail work, it puts strain on my hands. So, um, but like right now, when I'm doing the voiceover, they're not shaking or anything. Um, it's just when I do a bunch of embroidery. So, yeah, I <laughs> just wanted to clear that up. Okay, so this is what they all look like. Um, I think they turned out so cute. I like this, the shape of this. Sorry if you can hear the TV now. Um, Everly is awake now, eating breakfast, and then we're going to get ready to go to school, but... So this is how I would pair them in the sets. And then this next clip is Everly wearing them. So I didn't have time to do like a cool hairstyle or anything, but this is how I do the other clips in her hair. I just put two underneath the bun, but you could do it in so many different ways. But here's the end of the video. And thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys tomorrow with my packing video. Bye.